Hi, I'm Clark. I'm a liveaboard sailor. Been living on this boat for 30 years, living off grid, 12 volts, whole way. I do a lot of reviews about batteries, and today it's not gonna be about a particular battery or a particular power station. It's gonna be the different chemistries of lithium. This is really important. This is one of the more important videos. This is how not to die. Guys from EBL contacted me and asked me to do a review on one of their power stations. This is not a review on the power station. That's coming up. A little spoiler, this has some features that are make it worth getting, but uh, we'll get to that later. This power station has what we call lithium iron phosphate batteries. It's the only kind of batteries I'll ever show you, basically, on uh, a, a review or anything. It's the only ones to get. And in this video, we're going to talk about why that chemistry is what you want to get. This company makes... Um, power stations and batteries and all kinds of things related to batteries, but they make some of them that are re based on other lithium technologies that aren't quite so safe. They contacted me some months ago and asked me to do a review on a battery pack, uh, one of these power stations, and I just said, hell no. And I, I actually told them those should never be used on a boat. And to their credit, uh, it was, you know, why? That, that interests us. Why? Because you know, they want to help with their marketing and safety and everything. And they explained this little thing you probably heard me say before. You know, if this was a car and you're going down the road and something really bad and thermal runaway started happening, you slam on the brakes until it's safe to jump the hell out. On a boat making a, a crossing across the ocean, your big choice that day is do I drown or do I burn? You got to be safe with fire on boats. So I said no to their battery, but I said I would review this one because it's based on the good uh, batteries. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the different kinds of lithium batteries that are available. When you use one, when you use the other, and it's always up to you to make your own safety decisions. I break my own rules sometime, and I'm gonna tell you why I break it, when I break it. Generally, I wanna discuss this so we can decide what's right for us. So what are the types? Well, in my opinion, it kind of comes down to lithium iron phosphate and everything else. But there kind of are three kind of groups, I guess. You've got cell phone type batteries, and these mostly now, I believe, are lithium polymer. Um, these are very small. You can tell, you know, there's not that much power in it compared to this. This thing has two kilowatt hours in it. There's a lot of energy. This guy's smaller, and we've all seen videos where someone's cell phone bursts into flames, and, you know, it's really bad, and I wouldn't want this in my pants pocket when it went up. But, you know, when they threw the cell phone aside, the ensuing fire was manageable. These are quite small. Also, the cell phone companies all know that every time a Nikia shows up with a fire on an airplane, they're getting a lot of bad press. So their engineers go to real great extent to make these things safe. In my opinion, these are probably one of the safer lithium uh, devices around. So because of the size and because of what I believe is their paranoia to bad press, I will charge these and actually leave them alone. I will routinely plug this in and go to sleep and feel pretty good about it. If you wanted to be extra safe, it would behoove you to put this in a, a metal box or at least on a cookie sheet. So if it did thermal run away, it probably really wouldn't start anything else on fire. But I make that the first category. Really small things, really well engineered. And I've just decided on Temptress that we accept this risk. Next step, these. These have that middle kind, just usually called lithium ion. They have manganese and cobalt and things like that in them. Uh, these are great for this because there's a lot of punch in this very small battery. If this was lithium iron phosphate, it would be heavier. And I need this to do a very powerful job. But you know, if I have to replace a battery every five years, it wouldn't really break my heart. So this battery and actually also this battery, they're really good at holding a lot of power in a small space, but they're not known for their long life, particularly these guys. So that's the next category. And this battery, I use it. I have several of them on board, but I do have a very strong rule. This battery never goes on the charger unless I'm on the boat. And then it sits out on a table like this. And I don't leave the boat. I don't go to sleep. I don't do anything, you know, read a book or 
play on the phone. But if something were to go wrong, I want to be able to grab the cord of the charger and whip it overboard, you know? Um, these are not to be trusted. And honestly, I'd rather they not even be aboard the boat, but nothing does the job like this. And honestly, I'm too lazy for cords. Final category is the lithium iron phosphate. Um, anything can do this thermal runaway trick, supposedly. But to get one of these to do it, it's really difficult. There's a video out with a, a guy, it's all in Chinese, but you can see what he's doing. He takes lithium iron phosphate batteries, he charges them to full and uses a meter to show that he's charged them to full. And then he just abuses them in the most comical and ridiculous ways, like putting them into fires, shooting them with guns, stabbing them with nails. And he doesn't get thermal runaways. I mean, he gets steam coming out, there's energy, but it's just not the same as, you know, the video of this guy with this in his pants. So I feel I can trust these. Um, I want a BMS on them that's watching, that's, you know, keeping them from going crazy. If things get hot, I want it shutting things right down. But I feel that's more trustworthy. Um, why is it important? You know, is this like a one in a million thing? Um, you know, like the, the guy with this, you know, two videos of these things and everybody gets to see it. Not so much. I want to tell you a story of a good friend of ours um, actually, he wasn't a friend when this happened to him. We met him afterwards. He was in his boat. Um, he has a lot of lithium iron phosphate batteries on his boat. He's very bright and he set them all up himself and it was a good system. He had gone back to the States. He does uh, installs, very nice installs by the way. I'll put his contact down in the description. If you need electrical systems or whatever installed on your boat, if you can get them, he's the guy. It just looks like aircraft industry level. It's really beautiful for the work he does. Anyway, he came back with some cheap Chinese components with lithium batteries in it. And he came back late, of course, and he shoved them into a, a, a cupboard and went to bed. And in the middle of the night, his boat burst on fire and the center of it was right there. We have good proof that the real lithium ion phosphate batteries weren't involved in starting the fire simply because as the boat was burning down right to the water line, the air conditioner pump was still running. Now, the air conditioner was losing, but it was still operating and it couldn't have operated if, if its batteries had failed. So poor guy uh, was there for a bit, had to get the hell out because you know you die in situations like that. And uh, he hopped in his dinghy with his total possessions were his dinghy and his dinghy motor and himself. No clothes, no nothing. Next day I met him because I offered him a pair of shoes. Um, he did an interview with us about that, so I'm making it too long of a story. Uh, I highly recommend you just watch that video and he, he tells a good story. So, but suffice to say, a guy that's a real expert with lithium batteries, still, when he wasn't diligent and had the wrong kinds of batteries aboard, he had the worst thing possible happen. It can happen to anyone. So the three types are lithium polymer, and I'm categorizing that not just by the battery type, but the engineering involved. And I'm just gonna say cell phones, probably pretty safe. Things like power tools, the bigger, more powerful things, don't trust them so much. But what really matters is when you get to these big, multiple thousand of watt hour batteries. That's a lot of energy. Think about you plug an angle grinder and go to work for hours with this thing. When they thermal run away, all of that energy has to leave the battery in minutes. Um, these things, these things, all of these can carry more energy per mass than a hand grenade. Nothing to be messed with. So if something this big were to go crazy, what can you do? You can't be grabbing it, it's on fire. You, you can't like pick it up with a shovel or something and it's going to put out so much energy, you're just gonna have a fire. It's just gonna be uncontrollable. So when you go to this size, whether it be a power station of this size, I think particularly a power station, or even your house batteries in your boat, the only chemistry to consider is lithium iron phosphate. When people ask me all the time about the bank manager, that little creation I've got that lets you easily install a lithium iron phosphate and manage it properly. 
can that work for lithium ion? I've got all these old Tesla batteries or whatever, and, and I wanna work with my battery. Sounds like a great idea. My answer is technically it could, but I would have to redo the, all the engineering, and my second answer is I won't. I just won't be responsible for people putting that technology on boats because you can't run away from a boat. So in short, this is more of a house cat. This is a tiger. You have a very big tiger on your boat and you get mauled, it's your own damn fault. Stick with the house cat. So, why don't we all just use this? This is the, the safer technology, why not? Well, these and these have a much higher power density. I don't know the actual number, but it's a lot more. I mean, think how much work you can do with this little battery and that drill. Uh, it's not as much as this will put out, but this weighs nothing. So density of these technologies is better. Uh, some of these can put out power much faster per unit size than these can, and that's important for something like a drill. This can take a charge pretty fast. It's got that going for it, though I don't think it helps its lifespan any. This guy is heavier, but he's got a much longer life. Um, I'm not actually sure the numbers on these, but this could be like four, five, six, whatever, thousand cycles. These are nowhere near that. When did you have a phone last uh, four or 5,000 days? It, it, they just don't even come close to that. So the lithium iron phosphate is also the smart choice if you're gonna have something you're gonna own for a while. These power stations, you should be able to buy one of these and have it for 10 years, really. So um, why not get the right battery up front and not be throwing it away later because the batteries fail. It's not like you can change the batteries in these things. They're not user serviceable. And the ultimate difference, of course, is these are safer. Well, that's about all I have to say on this. I would like to tell you why I chose to do this video today. I mean, it had a bit to do with, you know, you've heard me kind of preach about this chemistry over these chemistries. But a guy just put up a post on our Facebook group about lead and lithium on boats. There's a link to it down in the description. And he showed one of these, based on the wrong batteries, that he had in his house and it burned up. It thermal run away. Um, it didn't burn the house down, but I guess the smoke damage made it so he's living in his camper outside his house now. Um, that's bad news. And it got me thinking that if I'm gonna talk about batteries, I gotta be, at least on the record, at least have one video where I'm very clear about the ones I, I, re I trust more than the others. I mean, I don't trust any of this stuff. A lead battery can burn down your boat. They short out internally all the time, probably more than these. But of all the choices, and you have to make one of the choices, that's the one. This is one of a lot of electrical and battery related videos I have, reviews, all kinds of stuff. Uh, check through our list, you know, as you hit the subscribe button down there, hit the Emily and Clark picture, it'll take you to where there's videos and you can see them all. We have playlists and the playlists are all organized for you. But I've got videos on batteries, battery reviews. I've got videos on my friend's boat burning down live and the interview with them. I bet you there's some stuff in our back catalog that you'll find interesting. Bye from Clark on Tempest.